Hello, good to be with you once again on Midweek Bible Study. I uh, hope you're doing well this week and I hope God's been blessing you. Um, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for another day, another week, and we just thank you for loving us. God, be with those again that are sick, those in the hospital, uh, but most of all, that lost soul, dear Lord, that does not know you. God, please touch them, bring them to a saving knowledge. And Lord, we just uh, pray that you'd use us daily, Father. Forgive us, Lord, every day of the sins we commit. But Lord, help us to be faithful vessels in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're coming to you again. This is the last um, of Titus. We're finishing up Titus today. And uh, I'm not sure where uh, we're going to go to next week. But <clears throat> I'm sure God will lead me uh, in one way. Uh, the title of my Bible study today, Committed Christian Believers, Titus 3, 12 through 15. Uh, this is the close of Paul's letter to Titus. As usually, Paul closes his letters by sharing uh, his plans and sending greetings to various believers. Hence, here the close of Paul's letter to Titus, all, or, or, to all his uh, folks that he have written, always gives us a glimpse uh, into some of the believers, into their lives, the lives that they live, the dedication that they have for the Lord, in other words, their commitment, uh, their dynamic examples that they leave us. Uh, so let's read those verses, and um, I may stumble over some of these names, <clears throat> but bear with me. Verse 12 of uh, Titus 3, and it says, When I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Titicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, uh, for I will have determined there to winter. Bring Zenus the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. All that are with me salute thee. <clears throat> Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. Again, let's pray. Father, again, thank you for the day and this word. Thank you for loving us. Guide us. Help us, Lord, as we look into this scripture. Father, to uh, just uh, enlighten us and bless us. What great examples we have in these men today. As we look at their lives, Father, just have it to be an encouragement to us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This is probably going to be a short one today, uh, but, <clears throat> but it's going to be good. So again, follow with me. Starting with verse 12 there, uh, we see Artemis. Uh, he was unknown, uh, but a committed minister. This is the only time that we see anything about Artemis mentioned in the Bible. But note these facts. He was a companion of Paul. That tells you something. Uh, that tells you how committed he is. That tells you how faithful he is, is the fact that he is a companion to Paul. Paul didn't hang out with just anybody, I mean, especially when it comes to sharing the gospel. <clears throat> uh, he was a fellow minister serving under Paul, a, a humble minister willing to, to serve in second place, uh, not to be number one. He was willing to line up behind Paul. He was called, or he, his call was to serve Christ and to serve Christ no matter where uh, he was placed. He just wanted to serve God, even under other uh, ministers. So he was a committed minister, a minister who was willing to serve on a foreign field among other uh, or very difficult people. Uh, he was apparently a strong minister for he was being sent to serve in Crete. Uh, Crete was known to be a most difficult place uh, to try to <coughs> minister. The citizens there were difficult people to work with. They had uh, some pretty bad in, uh, reputations uh, back in the ancient world. So again, uh, these Cretans uh, became uh, uh, actually a byword for evil. So anyway, uh, they were famous for drunkenness, uh, <coughs> untrustworthy, lying, gluttonous people. So imagine being sent to serve among people like that. But Art Artemis uh, had to be very strong in the Lord. And, you know, we're called to be strong. To serve God, we need to be strong. And the older we get, the more we are to grow in our faith. And the stronger we get, our bodies deteriorate and we get weaker. But our faith should not. Our faith should grow. And, and spiritually, we are to become stronger and stronger. We are to become spiritual giants, heavyweight spiritually, no matter the size of our bodies. And so we understand that Artemis was one of those who was strong in the faith and the spirit. The next one we look at there in verse 12 is uh, uh, Tychicus. Uh, or Titicus, however you want to pronounce that. It was the most dedicated uh, minister. He was really dedicated. Note that <clears throat> nothing is said about 
uh, him and this passage except the fact that uh, he may be sent to Crete to replace Titus as the minister there to the Cretans. And uh, Titicus is mentioned throughout Paul's letters. Uh, he was one of Paul's uh, most faithful and trustful ministers. He was commissioned by Paul uh, as a messenger uh, to various churches and he was entrusted to deliver the letter to Paul to, the, to Ephesus and Colossians and also Philemon. So he was sent on very special missions for Paul, even uh, sent to Ephesus, uh, according to uh, chapter two of Tim or two, Second Timothy, chapter four, verse twelve. I'll get it right in a minute. Anyway, he was to be sent to Crete for uh, the purpose of relieving Titus in Titus three twelve. So he was called not only Paul's beloved brother and faithful minister, but also he was a fellow slave with Paul. So he was. Dedicated, He was sold out. Whatever that word slave means, that Jesus owned him. It was his property, and he knew it, and he was proud of it, and he was willing and ready to serve. So the point to see is the present passage is that the dedication of Titicus. He was a dedicated man. He was a man uh, uh, with a worldwide vision, and he had a, a sacrificed his life to reach people, no matter where they are in the world. He was just a... Uh, uh, wanted to reach them with the glorious news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And note, there was the possibility that he was going to be sent to one of the most difficult places in ancient Rome too, the island of Crete. Uh, but he was a man of commitment, a man who dedicated his life to Christ. And so therefore he was ready, he was willing uh, to serve any place that God was wanting to call him to and to use him. Uh, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight says, Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So when we're serving God and we're doing it for Jesus, it's all about him, God will bless, and it's not in vain. So next we see uh, the next person here, a strong disciple with special strength, Titus. Know that Paul wants Titus to join him in Nicopolis. Uh, why? Paul does not say, but Paul needed him for some special ministry, a ministry so special that the other ministers with, uh, with Paul uh, seemed to couldn't handle it. So he says, you know, Titus, he's the one, he's the man. Uh, Titus, you come. So this fact, plus the fact that Titus had been the disciple left behind to set the order uh, there in the Cretan churches show that Titus was a strong disciple, a disciple of unusual strength. He was a pioneer for Christ. He, uh, a disciple so strong in Christ that he could be uh, the first to reach an area for Christ and to set up the churches in order for Christ uh, to minister and to bless and to reach out. You know, the Bible tells in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Man, isn't that wonderful? God is always with us. When God calls us and when he calls you to serve, he wants us to be men like this. He wants us to be servants like this. He wants us to be sold out, slaves to him, putting him first, his will, his desire, God's will for our lives. Now we see uh, Zenos uh, here is a committed layman here. Verse 13, excuse me. This is the only time Zenos is, is mentioned in the Bible. And he was, according to the scripture, he was a lawyer. He was a Christian believer, a layman who trusted Christ with all of his heart. And so he was committed uh, believer. So committed that he deserved support from the church, despite uh, the fact that uh, uh, he was a, layer, a lawyer and a layman, and he was not a full-time minister, pastor, or, or uh, preacher, or, or missionary, whatever you want to say there. But anyway, no, Paul was telling Titus, uh, to bring Zenos to him. Uh, the lesson is clear. Christ needs uh, committed people, committed laymen, who will commit their lives and to serve him and to help uh, others, uh, believers, uh, to come closer to Christ. So laymen are important. We need them in our churches. We need them in our communities. We need them going around the world to serve the God. <coughs> Excuse me. They needed to be so committed and they need to be so committed that uh, they're worthy of support by the church. When you've got a good layman, you've got somebody who wants to go out and do, then the church needs to support them and back them. The church may, uh, the church may not be able to support them in addition to the full 
full-time staff, but the laymen should be so committed they are worthy of the support. So there's a two-factor there. Whether we get the support or not, as laymen, we are to be worthy of it. We, we are to work worthy of it. I hope that makes sense to you. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Man, we need to be sold out, don't we? Just like this scripture says in Romans 12. Next, there was Apollos, an evangelist who witness was needed. Look at verse 13. Apollos is mentioned several times throughout scripture. Uh, but Apollos was called to preach Christ. He was an evangelist. He was coming to evangelize the lost. Man, what a job he was called to do. What a difficult job. What a wonderful job. What a rewarding job uh, to go out and to preach the gospel and evangelize. But as soon as he knew the truth, he was set aflame. When he got Christ, this man was set aflame. He was a fiery evangelist, uh, just burning to share the gospel of Jesus, just burning to preach. He was on fire, and Paul apparently needed him there at, at uh, uh, Nicopolis there. Uh, imagine to have such a burning zeal for souls that others request for your witness. He said, you, you send him over here. We, we need him. Bring him here. Uh, because he's such a fiery uh, evangelist. He's, uh, uh, you know, what a dynamic example. We need more people like that today. We need men and women who are burning uh, to reach the lost for Christ, who are on fire for the Lord. But note the Apollos here. Uh, the evangelist is not to be left uh, uh, needing anything. The church is to support him, meet his needs. Why? Because he sold out to preaching. He sold out to sharing. This was his livelihood. Uh, and I don't mean it that way. That was his, his calling. But, you know, because he accepted God's call in his life, then God was going to provide for him through those whom he evangelized, through the church. <coughs> Excuse me. The Bible says also in Romans 1, 14 and 16, I am a debtor both to the Greek and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as I in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are uh, at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Man, what a wonderful, powerful scripture. Also there, uh, there are, were the believers, the people needing to learn good works. There in verse 14, what does it mean? And it says there, and let others also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses. And he's talking about the rest of the believers. So, so note Paul calls the believers for, for, uh, of Crete other people. Uh, and, 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 and mm, getting tongue tied here. An enduring term, the, the, the Amplified Bible puts it this way. Let me read that to you. And let our own people rely, learn to apply themselves uh, let me start that over. And let our own people really learn to apply themselves to good deeds, to honest labor and honorable employment, so that they may be able to meet necessary demands whenever the occasion may require and not be living idle in uncultivated and unfruitful lives. Uh, that is uh, the Amplified Bible. Uh, but the point is that believers are to work and to labor in order to make money, that they are able to do good works with their money. Uh, there's those who uh, were called to work. I'm just being honest. Uh, everybody's not called into the ministry or go out, but you know those people who have got their jobs uh, are to work hard, to make their money, to provide for their families, pay their bills, but also to share in the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they are to help those in need, ministers to help meet the needs of the world. And they are to support men, such as uh, Zenos and Apollos, both laymen and ministers who have given their lives and their time to serve Christ. So they are to financially support, spread the gospel around the world. Matthew 6, 19 and 21 says, let not, uh, lay, not, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust uh, doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Our focus and our minds are, are, should be to, to spread the gospel as much as possible, giving our money and our times and our prayers 
uh, to uh, send out missionaries, to back missionaries, and to back our local uh, leaders, uh, uh, support them, pray for them. Uh, last thing, verse 15, they were fellow workers, servants of God. All that are with me salute thee, greet them that love in the faith, love us in the faith. Um, <clears throat> Paul had several fellow workers with him. All of them sent their greetings and their prayers from God's grace upon the Christians there in the uh, Crete, the, the Cretans. So the idea is that of support and encouragement. And, and remember, nothing, in, uh, nothing encourages us or stirs us uh, to serve Christ more than others faithfully supporting us or believing in us and praying for us and lifting us up. So we need to bless and lift up those uh, who are in the mission field. Uh, they need our prayers. They, they face all kinds of troubles and obstacles and uh, they have to do without a lot, uh, but God always provides their needs and we need to, uh, and he does so through us in many ways and many times. So we need to do our best to help uh, in any way we can. Uh, it says all uh, of our greetings, it says, uh, remember nothing encourages again, uh, like others encouraging you. When things are going bad and trials after trials confront us, the very thing we need is a word of support, a love, compassion from fellow workers, uh, from fellow believers in Christ. This is the reason we must continually support those in the ministry. And uh, as a Southern Baptist, we do so, uh, supporting the missionaries all over the world. And I think that's a wonderful, good thing. And maybe someday God may call you uh, to go out and be a missionary. Galatians 6, 2, we're going to end up here. It says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, it is our job to bear one another's burdens through prayers, through needs, through money, uh, to doing our best to reach out and to help. Uh, well, that's going to wind us up here in Titus. I hope you've enjoyed the book of Titus. And again, I'm not sure where I'm going to be next week, uh, next uh, midweek, but uh, I'm sure God will lead me somewhere. And I hope that you will follow us uh, on our midweek services. But we love you, and we're going to end here in prayer. God, thank you for the day and all your blessings. Thank you for this uh, Bible study in Titus. Thank you, Lord, for the knowledge that you've given us. Pray it inspires us, grows us, and draws us closer to you. In Christ's mighty, wonderful name, amen and amen.